I had absolutely no idea that the last video that I filmed on this would resonate so much with you guys as a community. And I've got to say, like, I was so touched by all of your comments. So I'm super thrilled to do another video on it. Hey guys, if you guys are new here, my name is Amanda Weldon and I've been hanging around YouTube for some time. We've been ramping it up late lately and I've been doing two videos a week. But recently I saw the stats on one very specific video kind of go a little higher than I'm used to. And that was 20 tips and tricks on how to manage fine slash thin hair. Either one, if you got one, if you got both, that video was for you. I will link that up above if you haven't seen that one yet. But what I was so touched with was your responses, how emotional some of you guys were, and as well, how you were commenting back to each other, giving each other tips, or even just sharing that, wow, yeah, I feel so much like this too, and I haven't really experienced anyone talk about this before. Now, I know that there are quite a few videos on this online, but I had never really seen anyone with like my very specific type of hair, and keep in mind as well, before doing this video, I washed my hair, I did the different part blow dry and as well I did a little teasing and I'm pretty happy with how it looks today so yay! <laughs> Cheers, right? Even if you don't do video or you're not in broadcasting, you may have had to be on a Zoom call and you're probably thinking, ah oh, crap, I hope my hair looks good today. So let's jump into it. Today's tips on how to be a little bit more confident if you've got a bit of a pain body on top of your head. So I was telling my partner, Scotty, that I love the fact that there was a community about this, but I'm just not sure whether I wanna make videos on this. I don't know if I wanna be known for this. This is one of my biggest insecurities. Why would I wanna to proclaim to the world that this is now how I wanna identify in a space like YouTube? Well, damn, if, if there is something you wanna be relatable on, it's probably gonna be something that pains you the most every single day and finding relatability within that and community as well and supporting each other. And this first tip, guys, I know it's gonna kind of piss you off because it pisses me off and I know it's something I have to do, but it's obvious and you don't wanna do it because it's the first thing that you think in the morning. And the first thing that I wanna say is the self-talk. You can't look in the mirror and tell yourself that your hair sucks. You just can't, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. In the morning, I will wake up when I'm blow drying my hair, I will take my time, I will section it out now. And I think that's one of the really big misconceptions when it comes to thin and fine hair. I know for a long time, I would just have all of my hair down and I would just blow dry it and it would just naturally come out flat. Using a round brush and actually sectioning it out and taking that time and spending it as well on making it kind of lift up a little bit with volume, that has made the world of difference. And the biggest part about that is while I am doing that process, I will be like, wow, this is looking really good. My hair looks so good today. I look beautiful today. Or I'm really liking the way that my hair is lying like that. That positive self-talk is everything. Neurons that fire together wire together and our minds love to take the path of least resistance. So if we are so used to just telling ourselves that, you know what, we're not enough. We don't have enough. We don't look good enough that's where our mind is gonna go. So that's gonna stop. That's tip number one. No more negative self-talk when it comes to our hair. Number two is realize that you're not alone. If you guys hadn't seen my last video, which I said I will link up above, and then I hope that the comment section is very similar in this one as well, just scroll through that. A lot of comments that I saw there and I tried to reply back to everyone, I just said, just look around, look through these comments, see how many other women are saying this. And just by seeing that there are so many other women, and I actually had a couple men in there too, it just goes to show that this is totally natural, totally normal, and having this amount of hair is like totally normal, guys. Okay, like there is a ton of us around the world who have the exact same thing. So why are we thinking that this is so undesirable when probably the majority of the population has the exact same amount of density of hair as us as we age, as we go through menopause, as we experience pregnancy, if that is something that is along your life journey. I also saw comments in there and that made me a little nervous for fingers crossed those steps in my life. But no matter where you are, whether you're experiencing graying hair, there were also some women talking about that. You've just got to know that you're not alone. And the moment that you realize that you are not unique in having finer hair, it almost makes it easier. This next tip 
is something that I implore or employ every single day if I'm not having a good hair day. So what I do is I have a fallback hairstyle when I don't have extensions in and I'm just rocking my natural hair and I'm just like doing the damn thing. So what I like to do, I'll show you guys some clips. I love to use claw clips. One, because no breakage in your hair from having like a tight elastic band around them. Two, you can kind of clip them and push them up to add some volume on top of your hair. And three, it is so easy because if you experience fine hair, thin hair, you could start the day looking fine. And by the middle of the day, you are like, um, excuse me, <laughs> hair gods, what happened? What freaking happened? It does not look good anymore. That can be really stressful if you are just like out and about or chatting with people or like in the normal world where you are at work and just midday you're like, no, this ain't it anymore. I wish I could just shave my head. Having a fallback hairstyle is so great. So I'll link below a couple of the claw clips that I found that I really love. But yeah, no, I have one right here. So cute. I will literally just grab my hair, push it back, pull some front pieces out that can be really effective and then yeah guys look see so little and then I will just claw it back clip it up push it up boom fallback hairstyle and you just want to find one that you feel confident wearing whether that be a ponytail or a bun or something like this I think this can look nice because it's a little bit more maybe professional looking than just like a ponytail and I know that if, if you're watching this video you probably don't always feel comfortable having a ponytail because the density of that ponytail is we so have a fallback hairstyle whatever that looks like whether that be adding a little bit of curl or something like that that is going to save you on those days where you are just not feeling confident another quick hack for fallback hairstyle one that i learned just by accident well this was actually by accident because i had my extensions in so my hair was a bit thicker so i thought ooh, i could probably get away with like a bigger scrunchie so i bought this scrunchie with a lot of material and when i wore it with that hair it looked great obviously because it was just like there was a lot going on but I found that after I took out my extensions, I had this huge scrunchie and obviously I don't need it because there's not a lot to hold back. But what I found was when I put my hair up into a bun, it made my bun look so much bigger. Like it was such a crazy hack because obviously <laughs> if you put your hair up in a bun and you have thin hair, you get this tiny little like pea sized bun compared to some other people. But we're not comparing today, by the way. But if you use a really thick scrunchie, then it creates the vision of just having this big bun, but the majority of it is fabric, but no one can tell. So that is my quick hack for the day when it comes to hairstyles. The next tip is try new things because why the heck not? Go on Pinterest, look at different ways for styling your hair, and honestly, just give it a try. This week, I have tried to do a crimpy hairstyle, and I've also tried to curl it a different way, and I gotta tell you, both of them were huge flops in my mind. I just it just wasn't it it honestly just made it look like I let my hair air dry and it was like not cute but you've got to just try different stuff because you never know you may find something that you actually really like so don't give up on yourself don't give up on your hair and don't give up on just trying new things with it you've got enough there and you can definitely give it a go and if you don't feel like you have enough hair to try and do curls or anything like that try different berets try different claw clips just try different things because again like that scrunchie you just never know when you're gonna find something that actually works the next hack for when you have fine thin hair feeling confident is actually emphasize other things so this is something that I have been doing for years that I never realized I did it as almost a side effect of having thinner hair and that is earrings I love wearing big statement earrings because even if I have my hair pulled back, it's almost like another factor that people can draw towards. And I always get compliments on my earrings and it makes me feel good. You can also steal that little hack from me. Another thing has been trying new things and doing things that make me feel good, like practicing my makeup, getting better at doing that, finding out what combinations really work for me and make me feel good and practice really, you know, nailing 
toning down that skincare routine so that I can emphasize the things that I do love about myself. The next thing for feeling confident would be taking care. I know I feel more confident when I am taking the time to brush my hair slowly or straighten it slowly. I used to just rip through those knots and I didn't even know I was doing it. I just didn't really put a lot of stake into my hair so I didn't really take care of it the way that I should have been extra taking care of it. When we care for things, we put extra time into them. When we care for things, we want them to have their best look. But I'm sure if you're like me, there have been moments in time where you're like, well, I don't care about my hair. I wish I didn't have this hair. I wish I could just go and put in all the extensions and just feel so much better or look like her or whatever. It's the first thing I notice about someone when they walk through the room is what their hair looks like because it's my biggest insecurity. But something I've been telling myself recently is this state is only temporary. And so when I go into my hairdresser the next time, I'm going to employ a plan, a hair growth, a health plan. And the cool thing about hair is it grows. And if you have absolutely no idea how to take care of it, the first step should be seeking help, right? So next time you go into your hairdresser, say, okay, I'm sure you've heard me say this a million times that I have thin hair, whatever, but I wanna create a health and a growth plan when it comes to my hair growth and how I can get the most out of what I have. And this one kind of goes out to the ladies who were commenting in my last video saying, you know, I bleach my hair and it's really frizzy. It stays in place, but it gets really tangled. Well, maybe that processing of your hair is no longer the best suit for you. And it can be so hard letting go of who we want to be to pursue who we will be at our best. I know that's tough. I love having super long hair, thick looking hair, but the reality is, is that is just not where I'm at. And because this is temporary, we can definitely build out a plan on how to get a baby healthier result with what we've got. And that can also include not only going to your hairdresser, but also talking to your doctor. The very last thing I will say in this video is, guys, don't forget that self-talk one. I am so thankful to all of you who reached out to me. I got DMs on Instagram, I got comments in that last video, and just seeing that it affected you guys and it resonated with you made me feel so much more confident about sitting in my power with who I am and what I've got and what I've got in my head. After starting to employ some of these little things, taking care, slowing down, you know, that positive self-talk, I can already start to feel myself shifting towards feeling a little bit more comfortable and confident. And then as well, just not having that extra help in the hair department and now shifting towards this being my new normal, that has really helped. Acknowledging that there will be a period of pain and mourning and frustration and all of these things, especially if you're someone who is maybe letting go of a little bit of thickness help when it comes to extensions and things like that, that's okay, that's totally normal. You're getting used to what your new normal is, but I promise you that on the other side of that, there is definitely going to be greener pastures when it comes to healthier hair. And if you go back to having extensions and doing all those things, totally fine, because you are you, you are the leader of your own destiny, and if that's something that makes you feel more confident, go for it. Can't say that I won't ever again, but what lies beneath needs to be because you feel confident in who you are with or without them, and I think that would be the ultimate place to be. I love you guys so much, and we will see you down in the comments. I can't wait to catch up with you, chat with you a little bit more, see how your hair journey is going if you're coming from that other video as well, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!